In Unity, it's possible to add physics forces to 2D objects using effectors. In this example scene, we have a hat which spawns coins and a bomb object which will instantiate an explosion when we press the jump button. The coin prefabs have a Sprite Renderer, Circle Collider 2D, and Rigid Body 2D attached. The bomb object in the hierarchy has a simple script attached called Explode Bomb. In that script, we have a public game object called Explosion. In update, we're checking if input.getButtonDownJump is true, meaning the spacebar has been pressed. And if it is, we're going to instantiate our explosion prefab at the position of the bomb and set the bomb to inactive. The explosion prefab contains an animation. We're using the visible size of the explosion to choose the size of our Circle Collider 2D, which will determine where the physics forces will be added in the scene. The explosion prefab has a sprite renderer, animator, Circle Collider 2D, and Point Effector 2D attached. The Point Effector 2D will cause the explosion to repel the coins in the scene. The explosion prefab has a Circle Collider 2D attached. The isTrigger property for the Circle Collider 2D is set to true. This means that objects will be able to enter the area of the Circle Collider 2D in which they will have the physics forces of the Point Effector 2D applied. If the Circle Collider 2D is not set to trigger, Forces will only be applied to objects in contact with the edges of the Circle Collider. Importantly, the Used by Effector field is also set to True. This means that this collider will define the area in which effector forces will be applied. If Used by Effector is not set to True, a message will be displayed in the Point Effector 2D component saying this effector will not function until there is at least one enabled 2D collider with used by effector checked on this game object. In cases where multiple colliders are attached to a game object, this can be used to select which collider is used by the effector. In the point effector 2D component, the collider mask determines what layers collision will be checked on. In this case, the collider mask is set to everything. The force magnitude determines the magnitude of the force that will be applied to objects while in contact with the effector. In this case, it's set to 1000, which means that the force will be applied quite strongly, repelling the objects quickly from the effector area. The force variation is set to 500. Force variation allows us to add a certain degree of randomness to the force magnitude being applied. By setting the force variation to 500, this means that we'll be applying between 1000 and 1500 units of force each time the force is applied. It's also possible to use negative numbers in both force magnitude and force variation. We'll look at this in our next example. In this example, we have a black hole and an asteroid. The black hole has a Circle Collider 2D with its is trigger and used by effector parameter set to true, and a radius which is covering the viewable play area. In the settings for the point effector 2D attached to the black hole, the collider mask is set to everything. The force magnitude is using a negative value in this case, meaning instead of pushing objects away, it will attract them towards its center point. The force variation is currently set to zero. Before we discuss the other parameters, let's play our scene 
and see it in action. We can see that the asteroid is pulled quickly towards the black hole, overshoots a little bit, and then moves back to the center. To stop the asteroid from overshooting, we can use the drag property. The drag property will add drag to the asteroid's rigid body 2D while it's being affected by the point effector. Let's set the drag to 10. Now we can see the asteroid no longer overshoots the center of the black hole. The angular drag will allow us to slow the rigid body 2D's rotation. Since our object isn't rotating, we've left it at 1. The force source in this case is set to collider. This allows us to control the center point that our object is being attracted to using the offset values in the circle collider 2D component. If we play our scene, By adjusting the offset of the Circle Collider 2D center point, we can move the point that the object is being attracted towards. This can also create interesting behavior if there are multiple colliders being used by the effector on a single game object. The other option for force source is rigid body, in which case the rigid body's center of mass will be used. The force target allows us to choose whether to use the rigid body or collider of the object being affected. The rigid body will use the center of mass and not cause rotation. The collider will use whichever collider makes contact with the effector and may cause the affected object to rotate. The force mode currently being used is inverse linear. This means that the force will be applied based on the distance between the force source and the force target. This means that the asteroid will start out moving slowly and move more quickly as it approaches the black hole. By switching the force mode to constant, the force will be applied at a constant rate. Inverse squared will also apply force based on the distance between the force source and force target, but instead use a squared curve. In this case, the result is that it starts off initially moving much more slowly before speeding up as it approaches the point. The distance scale allows us to change the scale of our physics simulation without changing the scale of the objects in our scene. If we would like it to appear as if objects are moving over much greater distances, let's test this by changing our distance scale to 5 using the force mode inverse linear. We can see, because our object now needs to move over a much greater simulated distance, it's moving more slowly. If we change the distance scale, for example, to 0.5, we'll see that things happen much more quickly. As you can see, there are many interesting and creative applications for the Point Effector 2D component. Hopefully this video has given you some ideas. For more information, please see the information linked below.